Hey YouTube world, Homemade Game Guru back with another video. Now I posted two videos um, recently about how to make trading cards at home on a professional grade level and how to make your own trading card boxes or game boxes. And both videos have been very well received. And I've noticed that I've gotten a lot of comments and questions about how to get a game or a trading card set or a trading card game into the actual industry. That a lot of people, they've been inspired by the videos to make their own cards, to make their own card games, but they actually want to take that next step and put them out there. I know I have experience dealing with um, manufacturers, with distributors and retailers, and I felt, you know what, it makes sense for me to share my experiences with you guys and let you know some of the mistakes and some of the things I've learned so you don't have to make those mistakes and it makes it easier for you to get into this industry. So what I propose to do is I'm going to make a series of videos that I'll come out with incrementally on advice on getting into the toy industry, it doesn't matter. And you know, not just the toy industry, getting into any industry where it has to do with creativity, it's pretty much all the same and all relative. It doesn't matter if you're trying to get in with a big manufacturer, get them to do the work and you license it to them in return for royalties, or you decide to do it yourself and go after distributors. You know, and I'm going to try to share with you what I know and hopefully it'll help you guys out. But to start off, I'm going to talk about trying to get in with the big boys, trying to get another company to make your product, your game, your idea, whatever it is, and in the hope of a lump sum payment and royalties in return. It's a very hard road to go down, but it is possible, but there's some realities you have to take into consideration. I'll give you guys an example. When Trivial Pursuit first came out, one of the best-selling board games of all time, one of the most famous board games out there, Retailers and manufacturers were kind of adverse at uh, touching this new trivia game. So imagine that one of the best selling board games in history was rejected by pretty much every manufacturer who looked at it. So you might have a great idea that's flowing in your mind and you want a big company and you've probably even tried to get big companies to pick it up and you've been turned down. Don't get dejected, don't feel bad about it because most big companies want a sure thing. I'll give you even a better example. And this is something that happened to me. So I sent my stuff to all the big boys, Hasbro, Spin Master, Mattel. And it's actually with Mattel and their head office in California that I actually got some knowledge from a secretary who was there. This was like 10 years ago. But the secretary was very nice enough to just tell me how things worked. And what she told me is that at that time, Mattel got thousands upon thousands of submissions per year. And of all those thousands of submissions, at most, they might take one or two, and that's at most. Most of the time they would take none because large companies like Hasbro Mattel have inventors who work for them. They have their own brain trusts within their corporation. So they don't need outside ideas. They got people who are gonna work on Barbie and Hot Wheels and Nerf and all that kind of stuff for them. If you send out a concept to these companies, the best thing to do is call first. Find out if they're accepting any prototypes. Do not do what I call blind submissions. Just don't mail your game to them hoping that someone's gonna pick it up or look at it. Because when you do a blind submission there's no confirmation that your stuff was received and you'll be amazed that maybe three, down, three years down the line you see a game that's similar to yours but you have no actual proof that they copied your game. This stuff actually happens. The toy industry, as great of an industry as it is, it's still a ruthless business. So you don't want to just simply send out your stuff willy-nilly and hope that someone picks it up. You want to call or email, get a contact name, and then if that contact says, yes, send me the ideas, that is the first step. But once you get to that first step and you've got that contact, the next thing you want is a disclosure agreement. But disclosure agreements are there for companies to protect themselves. So they're acknowledging that you're sending them something, but through usually a two-page disclosure agreement, they're saying that there's no guarantees they're going to pick it up, but they are acknowledging that you're sending them intellectual property. But in every disclosure agreement, there is a clause stating that there is a chance that they might have a game that's similar to yours already in the works. This doesn't mean you can't sue them if you feel that they plagiarized your work. But just be aware of that, that a disclosure agreement is to protect their ass, not yours. But for your benefits, just an acknowledgement that they did receive your package or are going to assess it. Once you send your stuff to them, make sure you follow up, make sure you track your package, and make sure you also put in a return package back. So 
if you have a whole, let's say, trading card game that you send to Wizards of the Coast, for example, you want to also put in an envelope or a box with postage to send it back to you. Because here's the kicker about sending out uh, your intellectual property to these companies. After they turn it down, they'll still hold on to it. Many companies will not return anything back to you unless you put a self-paid address envelope inside the package because they're not going to spend the five bucks it is to send your $100 prototype back to you. Make sure you talk to your liaison or whoever it is that you're sending the package to to see if you can get your stuff back. Many of them will do it, many of them won't. Instead of going after the large companies like Mattel, Hasbro, Spin Master, it makes more sense if you still want to go this route to go after the mid-sized players. And you have a better chance of getting in with these guys, you have a better chance of finding a, a person specifically in the company that you could send your stuff to, and you have a better chance of getting your stuff back. But again, tread carefully. As great as the toy industry is, there's still very unscrupulous people in this industry. About five years ago, I sent out uh, information uh, to different toy companies, and I had one toy company in particular where the guy told me he doesn't have a disclosure agreement, but he believes in karma and doing the right things. And again, this is a buyer at a major company telling me this, that he believes in karma and, you know, not ripping people's ideas off, and I could send information to him and he'll get back to me. So, you know, I was like, okay, you know what? I never had anyone tell me this karma stuff before, but it was a concept I was sending out to other companies anyway, so there was proof that I was the owner of this because other companies had the prototype, so it didn't bother me to send it to this guy. But the minute I sent the package to him and I followed up, all of a sudden I never heard from him again. He went all quiet. He was quick to answer my first email, but now that I wanted him to respond back to let me know that he got my package, which I know he did because I always have my packages tracked, I never heard from this person ever again. So good no who knows what he's doing with my, my idea and myself and my lawyer are watching out to see, you know, it's five years later and I haven't seen anything close to my product that this company's come out with, but I'm still vigilant on it. You always have to be careful. Don't fall for any BS about, you know, they're not going to steal anything, they're not going to do anything with it. You want that disclosure agreement, you want some kind of indication that they received it, some confirmation that they have it, so you could save that and store it just in case. If you are one of the lucky few that has a manufacturer who accepts your idea, one, have a lawyer. I know lawyers are expensive, no one likes paying $300 an hour for a lawyer, but there are some reasonable lawyers out there if you shop around, never sign any contracts when it comes um, to selling your idea to another company unless you have a lawyer go through it. Trust me on this, I know of a guy who signed a contract without a lawyer and he got screwed royally because every contract is written for the benefit of the company, not you as the inventor. So make sure you always have a lawyer when you, disclosure agreements are usually simple enough to figure out on your own. You could have a lawyer go through that, but if they show interest, make sure you have a lawyer on your side. And when it comes to, again, protecting your ideas, when you're very tight on a budget, probably the best thing to do is what I call self-mailing. Because uh, when you mail out a package, it's post-dated. And many of you have already heard this. So you put all of your copies of all your stuff in a package. When you go to the post office, you make sure they date it, they stamp the date on it. You mail it to yourself. So it goes through the system, it comes back to you with all the indications that it went through the postal system, and then you just leave it. That is your proof of at least at that date, this concept was yours. So if someone else comes out with a similar concept later on, especially someone who you've dealt with and have seen your intellectual property, at least you could say, no, 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 I have this package that shows that at this date, far before you came out with anything, I had this idea. Because a lot of people who watch my videos are trying to make a trading card game, it's about copyright. And I said, as long as you could show proof of when you created the document on your computer, or the self-mailing, or what have you, as long as you have proof of when you actually created your work, you are fine. You don't have to pay anything for the copyright. It's automatic by law. And thank goodness artwork, music, all that stuff is copywritten, so you're all right. Just tread carefully, think about what you're doing. Going after the large companies is very difficult. It is not easy. Most of the time you'll be rejected. Some of the greatest toy concepts and board games of all time were rejected by big companies. They want a sure thing, and usually you'll have to end up doing it yourself, coming out with the concept yourself. And then once it's selling and it's eating into their market share, the big companies will contact you to buy you out. And that's what happened with Trail Pursuit, with some of the biggest games out there. Big companies like, oh, we didn't realize that this is actually doing well. It's already proven what it can do. Now we'll buy you out and give you a lump sum, maybe some royalties, and that's the end of it. So don't be discouraged. I would say try it just to learn what it's like to um, proposition larger companies. 
But when they start coming back at you saying they're not interested and all, don't let it eat at you. Take it as a learning experience and you could take that to the next step, which is coming out with the idea yourself. If a company decides to reject your idea, ask them for specifics on why they're rejecting the idea. Many companies will just send you a rejection letter, which is standard. It, it pretty much it says the same thing over and over again in a couple of sentences saying that, thank you for your submission, but at this time we are not gonna move forward with your concept, blah, 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 blah. Some manufacturers will actually be decent enough if you ask them to tell you what was wrong with your concept. So if they don't like the playability of it, they think the rules are too convoluted, um, they don't like the look of the prototype, the artwork, whatever. That kind of feedback is pivotal in making your product even better. So if they're not interested, that's the point where you ask them, well, let me know why. Give me specifics so I can make my product better. And in my next video that I do in this series, I'm going to teach you about not only prototyping, but also going in through distributors. It's easier to get a distributor than it is to get retailers. And there's a difference between trying to go after the big box stores like Walmart and Target and those guys and the small local shops or even the smaller chains like Learning Express or what have you. So I'm hoping to be your guide and help you guys out in this process and uh, I'll share whatever knowledge I can. But this is the first one telling you about the fun of trying to get in with the big boys, uh, with the manufacturers. And there is a chance, but it's up to you to take that opportunity and make the best prototype you can. Take the time. If it costs you $100 to make a prototype, then it costs you $100 to make a prototype. But make the best quality product because ultimately you're going to be judged on the quality of your prototyping. If you make some piece of crap that looks like it was thrown together with construction paper or in cardboard, then yeah, you're not going to get anywhere. But if you take the time to make a good, decent prototype that shows uh, uh, UPC on it, a proper box, instruction manuals, all the bells and whistles that you've thought about your marketing and advertising, they will take you more seriously and many of them might even point you in the right direction of other companies to approach. So let me know if you guys have any other comments or questions, if there's anything specifically you want me to tell you about or give you advice on, I'm here. I know there's some talented game inventors out there, some future games that will come onto the market and it'll make me feel good knowing that at least I gave you some knowledge or something that will help you get to that next stage because I love this industry and I know a lot of you love it too. So you guys take care, all the best, and happy inventing.